In this video, we look at how we determine the uncertainty in a measured value if the value is mathematically derived from a series of two or more measurements. A general rule of thumb to remember is that if a derived value is the result of a series of measurements, the uncertainty and therefore the number of significant figures is determined by the measurement made with the least certainty. Let's look at what this means in practice by considering the simplest derived quantity that we know, area which is derived from two measurements of length, i.e. length times length. So if we wanted to report the area of this rectangle, we need to consider the two measurements shown here, where one side of the rectangle has a length of 17.764 metres, and the adjacent side has a length of 11.1 metres. To get the area, we use our calculator to multiply these two measured values together and get the result of 197.1804 meters squared. Remember, we get the magnitude of the area by multiplying together the two magnitudes of the individual length measurements, and we get the derived unit, meters squared, by multiplying the two units together. Remember, what we do to the magnitude is what we do to the units as well. So this number here, the magnitude 197.1804, has seven significant figures associated with it, whereas this number here has only three. The area value expressed here at the moment says we know the accuracy of the area of that rectangle down to one ten thousandth of a square metre, and that's despite the fact that we only know the accuracy of one of the lengths to one tenth of a metre. So clearly the level of accuracy, the level of certainty, and the number of significant figures expressed in this area value are too high. And in fact, the area is more correctly expressed as 197 metres squared which has three significant figures in it to match the three significant figures in the 11.1 metre value, which importantly is the original measurement made with the least certainty. So when multiplying or dividing measured values together, and we just saw an example of multiplication, the number of significant figures in a number after multiplication or division is determined by the number of significant figures in the original number containing the least number of significant figures. Okay, that's a mouthful, which again is best demonstrated by example. So here we are multiplying three numbers together and then performing a division. And when we put these numbers into our calculator, here's the answer we get, which is a number with a lot of significant figures in it. So the question here is, how many significant figures should our answer actually have? Well, this number here has three significant figures in it. Remember, we are disregarding all those initial zeros, and the three significant figures are the 2, the 5, and the 9. This number here has four significant figures in it. This number here has five significant figures in it. And this number here has six significant figures in it. So it's this number here, which is the original number containing the least number of significant figures, and that's three. So we should end up reporting our end answer and rounding it to just three significant figures. So our answer, our most correct answer for this multiplication and division equation, is 4.08. When we are adding or subtracting, the process is slightly different, and it's more to do with the number of decimal places in the original numbers. The number of significant figures in a number after addition or subtraction is determined by the number of decimal places in the number with the least number of decimal places. Again, a mouthful, and best shown by example. Here we are adding three values together. They have varying numbers of significant figures and varying numbers of decimal places. When we add these three numbers together in our calculator, we get 10.73. Now this number here, the 3.4, has only one decimal place in it. And this is the number with the least number of decimal places. Our end answer, therefore, needs to be restricted to just the one decimal place. And so our end answer here is going to be 10.7. So for addition and subtraction, it's about the number of decimal places in the original value rather than the number of significant figures. Now we consider what we need to do when we take the log or the anti-log of a number. When we take the log of a number, we keep as many digits to the right of the decimal point as there are significant figures in the original number. Again, this is best described by example. So, if we were to take the log of 9.57 by 10 to the 4, we know that that number has three significant figures to it. And so, 
when we log that number in our calculator, we need to ensure we have three digits to the right of the decimal place in the end answer. In other words, 4.981. When we take the antilog of a number, the reverse is the case. We keep as many digits as there are digits to the right of the decimal point in the original number. So, for example, taking the antilog of 12.5, we note there is only one digit to the right of the decimal place. So our end answer has only one significant figure in it. 3 by 10 to the 12. Calculations involving exact numbers are also interesting. When we are performing mathematical operations using exact numbers, the exact number should never limit the number of significant figures in the calculated result. So, for example, if we found the thickness of one coin was 1.8 millimetres and we wanted to calculate the thickness of nine coins, the mathematical operation we would write out is 9 times 1.80 millimetres. This 9 looks like it only has one significant figure associated with it, and this measured value has three significant figures. So, the question is, how many significant figures should this end answer have? Well, I'm going to tell you that it should have three significant figures, reflecting the three significant figures in the measured value of 1.80 millimetres. The reason for this is that the 9 is an exact number, not a measured quantity, and there is no uncertainty in exact numbers. There is no uncertainty involved in counting the 9 coins. In fact, we can consider exact numbers to have an infinite number of significant figures, so they should never limit a calculated result.